This video is sponsored by Wildlife Command Center Coffee. More about them at the end of the video. Hey everybody, it's me, John Ward, and I am back with another One Filmmaker, One Film. And today my guest is... Hi, my name is Donald Wells. I am an amateur filmmaker. Um, I just make movies for the fun of it. And that's it. <laughs> well, your, your full name is Donald Wills, because I want, I want people to, to look you up. And um, we, uh, you, had, you had told me for this interview, when, when I asked you to do it, you were surprised. And you said, oh, well, I don't consider myself a filmmaker. Now, you just said amateur filmmaker. But at the time, you had said not a filmmaker. What, what makes you feel that you're not a filmmaker or just like an amateur filmmaker? I mean, I call myself an amateur filmmaker mainly because I don't feel like, especially the movies that I put up on YouTube, it's pretty much me just doing a spare of the moment thing, which we'll talk about when we get into the movies. Um, <laughs> so I consider, I don't know, I wouldn't, I haven't done a uh, feature, I guess. And a lot of people consider you a filmmaker when you make a feature film. So that's why I said I didn't really consider myself an actual filmmaker at that time. Were they, has, have anybody said that to you? Like, oh, don't consider yourself no, no. a filmmaker because you've only I, made I've heard film some people film. on, people say that before. I, I, I don't know. I, I just, you know, I don't know. I, it's it's kind of weird because I've never been, like, I don't do these for money or fame or anything like that. I just do them just for fun. And I never wrote, and like I said, mainly shot on a phone for almost 90 percent well actually all of them but i don't know no one's ever said that i just that's just the way i do yeah i i think if you write you edit you direct you produce you make a product i mean right now i'm looking at a list of of eight films i, I believe you have nine um i was able to look at eight out of the nine to me, that says you're a filmmaker. So that's, you know, if, if somebody ever says anything differently, then they're wrong. They probably haven't even made something themselves. Oh, yeah, I, I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Oh, sure, sure. And, and, and I like these. I mean, that's why, you know, I, I wanted you to, you know, I, you worked with me. I've worked with you. And, and uh, one of the films that we're going to be talking about, Blind Idiot God, is in a, um, an anthology that I'm putting together called Reign of Vibrant Screams. And, and I'm proud to, to have that film in there. You know, I, I, it's a good film. And uh, you even made like a little, like, I don't know, was it like five seconds or 10 seconds? Like a thing that's kind of glitching and it says Blind Idiot God. And I have that like way before your film, you know, it, it's all this stuff is on my timeline. And, and so we'll watch a couple movies and then that little flashing, you know, kind of, you know, Blind Idiot God thing is gonna come up. And then like a few movies later, your movie comes up. So it's almost like a little preview of, of your film because I thought it was cool. And to me, that's a filmmaker. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy to be in your stuff and, and I'm glad that you're, you know, that you're in mine. So to me, once again, that, that's a filmmaker. So I, I wouldn't let anybody take that away from you or from anybody else. So I, do, I appreciate you it. Know. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Because it's, Who's to say what somebody is or not? You know, that's that's not fair to people. So and 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 some people can make two hundred movies and call themselves a filmmaker, and and their three hundred movies or whatever it might be, and and go, oh well, I'm a filmmaker, but all their movies are bad. You know, or somebody can make eight, nine short films and they're all good. That they're still a filmmaker. Even the guy who made bad movies is a filmmaker. <laughs> So he made a product, it's out there, it's, so, you know. Um, but the two that, that you sent me, and, and uh, these are uh, DVDs, one is called The House at the End of Church Street, and that's this here. 
I have to put it right in front of me. There we go. I like that cover. And you even were nice enough to sign it for me. And um, here's its side. And it's back. Oh, oh. And, and I found you. It says you're missing here, but you're, you're actually right, right there. You're right next to me. So I, I found you. Is there a reward? Um, <laughs> get the movie. Oh, there we go. Okay. And um, this on the inside here. Look, these, these are professional. Look at that. Yeah, I, made, I, I produced some Fukunaki. Yeah. I found out just as soon as I, I wanted to put my movies out before that, I found out about it. And I was like, hey, makes movies. Why not? They're really good to use. Another company I just found is called Makeflex. Um, I th um, and they're, they're pretty good. But I think they're more bigger. I don't want to say bigger budget, but I think it costs more money to go through them. Uh, Kanaki is more of a, I want to say it's kind of like a poor man's way of doing it, because that's what I do and a lot of other people do. But Makeflex seems to be a little more um, detailed, a little more pricey, maybe. Um, so you got your... This house, I've noticed that you've used a couple of times. I'm going to ask you about this house, this abandoned house, which is really cool. And on here, you sent me a, so there's, this is an insert card that Kanaki lets us do, which I think is pretty cool. And then you wrote on, on it here, oh, oh, there it is. You can kind of see it there. And it says, John, enjoy this experimental short film I made on Halloween. And it's signed, signed by you. So thank you for, for signing that. Um, and then yeah. I also have on here is uh, Mystery Box O Horrors. And there's you looking all, all kind of like uh, possessed and stuff on the front there. And um, it, does this mean Mystery Box O Horrors? Yeah, it's uh, written in Lovecraft uh, font. Is it, it, does it actually say this? Or is it just kind of like me? It's, oh, really? It's, uh, it's basically the font, but I put mystery box of horrors. Uh, I like copied and pasted it, and then I changed the font to the Lovecraft uh, font that I found on Google or something. I forget where I found it. But oh, that, it cool. basically says uh, mystery box of horrors in Lovecraft. Sweet. That's nice. I like that. And you, you signed it for me here, and it looks like also Amy signed it here, too. Yep, I had I had her sign me and her both sign it. Now I noticed sometimes it's Amy Lee and then sometimes it's Amy Wills. Is this before you guys were married, or did she kind of just want to kind of have like her own name for when she acts? Lee's Lee, uh, Amy Lee's her Lee is her middle name. Ah, so we just a lot of times we just put her under Amy Lee. So. Kind of se separates the names, which is yeah, you know, yeah. And then there's the side of it, and we got the back, which has like a very Lovecraftian Cthulhu on the back there. This is, uh, we'll get more into it, but this is a, a Lovecraftian uh, film. And uh, this is, um, and there's also, is it Dane, is it Keel? Dane Kyle. Kyle, so he's in this too. He, you've worked with yeah. him a few times, I noticed. I've worked with him a few times, yes. Yeah. He's a good guy. He he uh he he helped helped me through a lot of he uh showed me, told me things uh about like films and stuff like how to make the music I like, think up so you so it's not like blaring or anything like that. And hey, he's a good guy. I I appreciate his help. Yeah, I, I'm glad that he did that because a, a lot of indie filmmakers the music is louder than the voices, and that always frustrates mm -hmm. me. And um, yeah. <clears throat> there's a little bit of a, a debate on that with Axmas too, uh, with the, the editor and, and the, the film composer. And they wanted the music way up here. And I'm like, no, bring it, bring it down. But people, you got to hear people talk. You know, you have to hear sound effects. You need to hear certain things. And, and I mean, I was the director, so I got my way. But, um, you know, it was just kind of frustrating that it's like I'm watching a cut of the movie. And, and I, I don't mean to put, you know, like um, Mike and Matt down. I'm not. But um, it, it's just, you got to keep that stuff low. It's music is in the background. You know, that's, that's yeah. what it's there for. Um, I've seen movies where, I've seen movies where uh, there would be people talking and the music is, is so loud 
And then there's times where there's no music playing and you can barely hear what they're saying. Right. Yeah, uh, I mean, there, there's I ways of adjusting these things. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so it says here on the back, uh, when a mysterious package shows up, dot, 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 as I like to say, all things go south fast, dot, dot, dot. Can you bounce back from the brink of insanity? And uh, the film is, I've had to point out these dot, dot, dots, because some people do two, some people do like five, some people do, and, and it's like, no, it's three. You do three. One is a period. Three is the correct way of doing it. Anything past three means you're a psycho. So it, it, it's like you, you need to learn how to, how to do, you know, people need to learn how to do that correctly, and you, you do it correctly. So that's nice. Okay. Um, well, the next says, time I do it, I'm going to have to do five just, just to get on your nerves. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do a whole video just on that. Why did he put five when we talked about it? Uh, it's that's a, I, I'm a little bit of a grammar grammar Nazi, so it, it's and I and admit that I'm, I'm no Ernest Hemingway, but still, you know, you got to learn how to do stuff correctly. Um, and it stars, you know, you, Amy, and then Dane. Uh, 2020 color black and white, approximately 30 minutes unrated. And we'll take a look inside here, and then this is your your inside. There's your your Cthulhu monster right there. Uh, this looks good. I like this. I always talk about this when I when I look at like DVDs from you know like Dollar Tree and stuff like that. Is how people put things together, and this looks nice. The black and the green it really stands out. Uh, the red is nice. You got good colors here, so I like that. It looks good. Um, you signed it for me here. Um, it says, uh, John, thanks for the trade. Oh, that's right, because we traded Axmith and Axmith too. Yeah, that's right. And, and um, so that's cool. So thank you again for for signing it. Um, no problem. So these are the these are the ones I got from you, and I'm and I'm very happy to own them. So they they sit proudly on my shelf. So the first film that we're going to talk about um, is this one here, and it is uh, the House at the End of Church Street. Uh, that's an interesting title. How did you come up with that title? Well. Uh, to answer the question about the house, that's actually my dad's house. Um, he, he, he was, um, how do I say it without being, sounding mean? Uh, he was kind of a, uh, a, scrap, a scrapper. I don't know if you know, know what I'm talking about. Person that I like, call scrap in for money. Oh, okay. Like he, and basically that's why you can see that there's a lot of like, scrap and stuff in the yard well anyway um they uh the the street that he was always parked on was called church street so his he's not he doesn't actually live on church street but that's how we usually came into the house when we came home and stuff through uh, from church street so that's why i called it the house at the end of church street okay yeah it's a good title i i like it and um in one of the films, I forget which one it is, is that you, it might be that, could be Deadly Invasion, but the camera goes up and looks through like a little square window in the door. And yeah, I'm like, oh, right. wait, does, does somebody live there? Because um, I thought at first, like maybe it was an abandoned house because there's like wood against the windows and, mm -hmm. and all that type of stuff. So did, does he still live there? Yeah, he still lives there. He's, he's just... Uh... The, the outside looks worse than it actually is, but he uh, he, he he's he's an older he's an older guy now, and uh, he uh, basically tries to uh, cheat a little bit when it comes to like you know fixing stuff if you know what I mean. So instead of like fixing a window, he'll board it up, so <laughs> over it, and stuff like that. So so it kind of. Uh, it works as an abandoned house. So that's why I chose the film. It's a great location. And um, there's, um, I think, yeah, this is the film that has it. There, there's a shot where it's far back and you can see the house in the distance. And then there's like an abandoned car. And then there's kind of like, like a bunch of like kind of like metal junk that's kind of all around it. Mm -hmm. and, and you use that shot, I think like three times in the film. And I'm like, oh, okay. Donald probably likes that shot too. And it's just a really nice shot of just, you know, you, you got some trees in the shot, then it goes into the car and what's around it, and then you see the house. 
and it, and it's a it's a nice detailed shot. And is that all his stuff too? Yeah, well, that is a um, no one really owns that land, so he's been using it for years, and so uh, no one's ever said anything to him. So we kind of call it our own, but it's not really <laughs> anybody's. Stuff. Yeah, it, it's a great location. I mean, you could shoot like a good Night of the Living Dead remake or just a zombie film on that location. And, and uh, it, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, Don't ever let him try to fix it up. If one day he goes, you know, I want to get out there and clean it. So no, 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 it's a perfect filming location. You know, I, I would use it a hundred times because it's so perfect. So yeah, it, it's really good. And uh, the film runs six minutes and 14 seconds. Um, it's black and white. Uh, why did you choose black and white? I've always liked uh, black and white movies. I grew up watching a lot of black and white movies. Uh, my my mom was always used to always watch like like uh, uh, like Dragnet and um, like Beverly Hillbillies and all that stuff. So I kind of grew to appreciate the black and white aesthetic. And I've always wanted to shoot a film just in black and white. So that's pretty much why I did it. How do you, um, because like you had mentioned and you've told me, um, you shoot everything on your phone. What type of phone do you use to do that? I have a uh, Android. Um, I think it's um, yeah, Samsung Galaxy A20, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I... Uh, yeah, I just, I, I never had a camera for the longest time that I could actually shoot with. And a lot of times the cameras I had were either like real bad quality. So this is the first time I actually had a camera that can actually shoot somewhat decent footage. So that's why I decided, you know what, I'm going to use my phone. I do plan on someday getting a, uh, a, like an actual camera so I can do like an official movie. Until then, this is all I got. Do you have gear or do you just kind of go out and, and kind of hold it like, you know, like this? Pretty, pretty much just go out and just use the phone. And then I pretty much fix like anything. Like if I, if someone coughed in the wrong scene, I'll just like, like go in, in, the, in the editing and I'll just fix it up then. What, uh, uh, is it like an app that you use for editing? Yeah, I use uh, UCut, I think it's called. UCut, yes. It's, uh, it's a free uh, app, but you can also pay. Uh, I do use the paid version. I think it's like $5 a year. Oh, wow. It's not bad at all. No, so, $5. And, for no. and I've been using it. I, every movie you've seen, I've used that app. So, I mean, I got... I got to the point right now where I prefer to use that over my computer anymore. How's the, uh, how's the sound work on that? Do you have a mic or anything set up or do you just go off on the phone? I just, everything's on, everything's all on the phone. And when you're editing a project, it's all edited in the phone. You keep the, you, you keep like the finished yep. product in the phone, anything, you know. Yep. Everything, everything is all done on the phone. I, I don't have, I mean, I have a computer, but it's not, it's an older computer and, and the editing software is like, like Power Director like 11 or so, I forget what number it is. And it's really just, just complete garbage. So that's why I was always looking for one that I could use on my phone. And this, I just so happened to come across this one. And I was like, you know what, this is the one that it feels the nicest. It's very smooth. It's not, you know, janky like a lot of these other ones are. So I, I do recommend it. If you ever want to edit something on your phone, definitely recommend that one. Well, you have, you have nine shorts to your credit and you're using your phone with this app and all that stuff. Do you find it necessary to get more like an actual camera or sound equipment or anything like that? I mean, if you were to make a feature, would, would it be shot with the phone and, and, and all that? If I was to shoot a feature, 
Um, I think it would be necessary to get an actual camera, mainly because this, this, uh, my phone, uh, runs out of space very fast. So every time I wanted to make one of these shorts, I had to delete 50 million things in order to film like three scenes or something. So I, for, for future, I would like to get an actual camera so I can act, you know, film and, and get like better quality, you know, maybe shoot 4k maybe we'll see yeah because it seems that if you kept using your phone you would almost have to gut it and just use it for you know a phone but also as a camera like you couldn't put music in it you couldn't do you know if you have apps for other things you'd probably have to have to get rid of them because you would yeah. you know maybe you know what you're filming like you said like three scenes and then you're gonna have to go download it to something else delete that film again, download to something else, delete that. But um, I mean, it would be interesting because that's kind of what you're doing is, is, you know, you could almost be known as somebody who makes their films that way. And that would kind of be an interesting, you know, way to go as, as a filmmaker, as look at these movies he's made because they look good. You would never know these things are just shot on your phone and edited on your phone and, and, and all of that. I mean, they, they look and sound good you know, compared to some other people's stuff, but just doesn't. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. So um, so with the, uh, the house at the end of Church Street, um, it starts off in, well, you're, you have like the, the credits come up and it says 1990, you know, like a young girl vanishes. And then we see this abandoned house. Um, and then you go check it out. And do we, will we ever know what happens? Do you mind spoilers? Can I, can I mention spoilers? Go ahead. Um. Okay. And to let people know, you can see almost all of his movies on, on YouTube. I'm going to put a link down below and uh, you can check them out. Um, I think maybe all of them, but three. Um, you're also welcome to put, you know, Blind Idiot God up there too. That's, that's fine. I, I don't consider it my film. It's your film. Um, so. But yeah, most of his movies are up there, so I'll, I'll put a link to it. So you, you go looking, this girl vanishes, you go to the same house, and then like weird stuff happens. You got these kind of like cool effects that are going on, and um, you disappear. And that's, that's where we get that you're, that you're missing. So what, do we know what it is? Do you know what it is? What, what's making people vanish? To be honest with you, I don't actually. <laughs> it was one of those, I, like I said, in uh, when I wrote, uh, thank you for the ex checking out this experimental film. That's pretty much all it was. I just went, basically, we went over to my dad's house to help him out with something. And I went outside and it was Halloween day. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to shoot some random things. And then basically the story came in uh in post-production basically so I, as i was editing i was like you know what, let me add a little story in here and then pretty much that's how it turned out to be you know the girl that van mysteriously vanished and you know what i mean so back in like 1990 the house was normal like like it was you know some nice house and everything and then we cut the present day where you're looking around and, and now you're saying the house is abandoned. So is that just over time that it's supposed to kind of, you, you know, look more uh, uh, abandoned and stuff like that? So whatever this thing is inside that makes people vanish would, would still be there. Yeah. Pretty, so. much what I, pretty much what I figured, like, you know, it's like 20 years later or something like that. So I, on some of these, I noticed that it's... Um, it's starring, edited, directed. Sometimes it says like starring, edited, written, directed. Um, how do you determine what credits you put on, on each film? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, well, I think the ones that I actually like plan out, um, a lot of everyone that's on YouTube, none of them are scripted. Like I, I, a lot of them were just fly of the moment. Like I just said, you know what? I'm going to film something 
and I just went out and filmed it pretty much. Okay. So that, that's why it, it's not, why there's really no writer listed is because these are more kind of just on the spot, mm -hmm. ad lib stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that explains it. And um, so now, um, yeah, I could see you actually making a feature out of the house at the end of Church Street, explaining, you know, more people disappearing and all that type of stuff. Like that's just the house that people don't go to because they, they disappear. And then, it, you know, at the end, figuring out where these people go to. You know, like if they're in some sort of other dimension or something like that. Yeah, I wish you would make a piece. After watching all of these, um, I told you, I think it's told to be like just over an hour with all the shorts. Um, I think that you could very easily take one of these ideas and make, you know, make a feature out of it, especially with what's around you. I mean, that house is great. I mean, I wish I had something like that out here. I just have desert. So not a lot to do out here but but you got even seeing the streets and some of the houses and stuff in some of these other films i mean you got a, you got some great locations out there i mean we, my dad pretty much lives up on like on a hill and pretty much there's like there's neighbors but we're pretty much like isolated not isolated but um pretty much he always kept to himself and when i used to live there that's pretty much all we did was we just like kind of kept to ourselves. So no one comes up and bothers us or anything like that. That's why I've always thought, you know, filming there is, is great because no one really comes up and bothers us. No one goes in, messes around or anything like that. So that's how I can get away with a lot of us. Does it have the reputation of like, no, that's the old Will's house. You don't want to go up there. You know, does it have that type of reputation? It's funny you mention that. Uh, <laughs> supposedly, uh, my dad said that before uh, he moved in, because when he moved into the house, it was it was pretty much an abandoned house. He fixed it all up and he put in windows and everything in it. Uh, he was saying that I guess before uh, people, I guess kids used to go up there and like have parties and all that stuff. And uh, I guess the neighbors made up this thing where it's the monster house or something like that. And I was, I'm gonna have to use, make, make that into a movie now, now I'm thinking about it. There you go, there you go. I mean, every place has one. I mean, we had the, uh, uh, back in the day uh, when I was living in Northern California, uh, there was the Weird Willard house and the guy spray painted Hotel California on the side. And part of it was burnt and you didn't want to walk past it because weird Willard would get you. And every once in a while, somebody would see weird Willard come out. And because I guess he was going grocery shopping or something. And the guy was just weird. It's it just, he was just a weird guy. I guess his parents owned the house and they left it to him. And he was just a weird guy. But his kids, it was just like, nope, we're going to cross that street, <laughs> walk around it. And then we'll get back on the street again. You know, it was always known as the Hotel California house. But you just didn't want to walk. Out. I mean, I think I think every town has one of those weird, oh, yeah. crazy guy that nobody wants to deal with. Um, I don't think we were that. We were that. But <laughs> we pretty much have, everyone avoided us. <laughs> Good for privacy and filming, like you said. So that that works out quite well. Um, so now the next film is. And it's not this version, but it's the Mystery Box O Horrors. So the first one I watched is the short version, which is uh, seven minutes and, and uh, 13 seconds. And then there's this one, which we'll talk about afterwards, which is the, the much longer version, it's the 30 minute version. Um, so um, this one is, is this the one that you showed me originally that was gonna be on Reign of Vibrant Screens? I forget. No, the one I sent you was the extended cut. Of this, okay, okay. Yeah, and the, that's the one, the, the DVD I sent you, yeah. Okay, so this one has, um, you, uh, you get this box in the mail. This is one that's very Lovecraftian. It's very, it's Cosmic Horror E. Um, yes. And you get this box and, um, it starts doing weird stuff to you and Amy. So how, how did you come up with the, uh, with the idea for this? 
Well, originally it wasn't even supposed to be a movie at all. Um, before uh, I decided to really start filming uh, movies at all, I had a YouTube channel where I was doing like movie reviews and stuff um, that I kind of, it kind of fell off. I need to get back to that at some point. Well, anyway, uh, uh, Dane Kyle, the one that plays in the movie, the, it, he's the one with the, uh, with with the, the yeah, smile. You just see his, you, yeah. You, you just see his face, yeah. And he does that creepy laugh <laughs> where he really sacrifices us to Cthulhu. Um, I don't know. It, it was kind of a spar of him. Like I said, th- these these movies are pretty much I'm not scripted. They're just like I just had an idea and just went with it pretty much. Well, anyway, the um, the move the it was only supposed to be like that little bit uh, before uh, I was doing an unboxing video of the mystery box, <laughs> which the name actually is all Dane Dane's uh, idea. So I give credit to him because. He came up with the idea because that's what the box was. And it was basically just me unboxing weird crap with some stuff I bought off of him, of course. And that's pretty much how it became. And then um, I had, like I said, the original uh, uh, cut ended where uh, when you started to see like the cryptic. Uh, like pictures of Cthulhu flashing on the screen. Right. After after uh, it cuts off, that's when the original one ended. Yeah, but you, would you the, looking like that or more or less like that? No, actually before that, I added that for the YouTube version. Oh, the film. oh so, okay. So okay. when when the cryptic, like the subliminal message kind of, kind of deal uh, ends, that's where the um, the skit ends on the YouTube video, and then that's when it get, went into my unboxing of the video of the of the mystery box that he sent me. Okay, I added okay. that little thing with the statue and all that uh, later, and then after that, I just kind of added more and more and more, which we'll get into when we get to the extended cut. Yeah, because it's. Um, uh... Yeah, because you get, uh, you tell Amy to, you know, watch out. There's this package coming. Be on the lookout for it. Um, she says, yes. You go to work. Is that your actual work? Yeah. Okay. Did they mind you filming there? Did they even know that you were filming there? They don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> uh, um, and then um, when you... When you get home from work, um, we see you know that Amy's just kind of staring at this unopened box. That's you know, and you're like, "What's wrong? What's wrong with this box?" And um, that's I think that's when we get the the uh, uh, black and white of the the mouth. Would it be correct in that order? It's it's been a while since I've seen it. Uh, yeah, I believe so. After the cryptic message, I think that's when. Uh, so cryptic message sorry. first. All the Cthulhu and pictures. Then, yeah, and then the uh, the mouth was saying like, "Oh, hail to the oh, great Cthulhu." Yeah, and then because it's interesting with those pictures, is that that kind of starts off as one, then it goes to two, then it goes to three, then it goes to four, and then it, there's just just all over all the pictures, how did you decide on, on what pictures to, to use of Cthulhu? Um, Google. <laughs> just I Cthulhu mean, pictures? <laughs> I basically just downloaded a bunch of uh, Cthulhu pictures. That's why this movie is only available on YouTube. I couldn't sell it because I thought, well, all these things, I don't own the copyrights to these pictures. So that's why, because originally I was going to sell the extended cut uh, for like five bucks or something like that. And I was like, wait a minute, there's um, copyrighted stuff in here. I may not be able to do this. So, so I just, yeah. uh, eh. it is what it is. I mean, to be honest, like I said, it was all experimental. I didn't, like I said, didn't, uh, I'm just repeating myself. I do apologize. <laughs> 
How long did it take you to put all those pictures together? Probably like, I think the hardest part was um, going in between like the, uh, pretty much I just took like the 10 or 20 pictures and I just condensed it down into like a second. And so, so it's all looping really fast. Like, like, like you were watching like a subliminal message or something. And uh, pretty much it was that. And I just, I just playing over for like the 20 seconds or something like that it was. And uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think the original one had a chant that I found out later was actually by uh, a metal band. I didn't know this until afterwards. I looked in the YouTube uh, comments and it said, uh, I cradle a filth song. And I was like, I didn't know oh. this was part of the song. So the second one is actually a guy on YouTube that uh, the chant's different. Oh, okay. Kind of oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, because then you, you have um, credits and then there's the end of the scene has you. I guess that's when the one that I sh saw the short one, then as you look in with that. <laughs> and then that's when it gets all uh, all kind of weird. So yeah. what about the uh, the Cthulhu statue? Where'd you get that from? Um, Amazon, <laughs> believe it or not. Actually, I have them right here. Oh, there it is. Nice. I... Uh... Before I even decided to film this, I uh, I wanted I, I I was obsessed with Lovecraft for the longest time, and uh, I just got into Lovecraft like around 2019 or 2020 because I really wanted to read his uh, his work, and I found that for like, I think it was like 22 or 26 bucks on Amazon, and I was like I just had to have. It. Yeah, it's 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 a good statue, and, and the extended one, you're 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 kind of you know you're holding it and looking all kind of you know creepy and weirded out and all that stuff. And and I thought, what if he just turned it upside down and it just said "Made in China"? You know, that's... <laughs> well, now that you mention it, it, says "Made in China." Ah! <laughs> So maybe it was all in your head, you know, this whole thing. <laughs> um, so this one does have a combination of black and white and color. How did you decide on uh, like the, like uh, Dane talking into the cameras, black and white, there's a shot of the statue, black and white. How did you decide to go between both? To be honest with you, uh, this, I just kind of like, uh, just, just, I, there wasn't really any reason. I just thought it looked cool. I mean, okay. just, and especially the, uh, are we on the extended cut now? Um, yeah, we can, let's move to, yeah, to that. I mean, if we're still on, if we're still no, on no. the, uh, no, because okay, both I, of them I, go, I, go back and forth. So we're, we're, we're okay. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, uh, the second one I watched after the short one was the mystery. Uh, box of horrors extended version that runs 28 minutes and 53 seconds so quite a difference um yeah. there are two fake trailers on this so um uh which is the man who peed blood um that that's interesting so tell, tell me about that and we'll, we'll get a little bit more into the black and white and color so well, tell me about the man who peed blood I mean, it's the man to feed blood. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, like, like I said, I just had a funny idea. I just went in. I had a, a, one of those, like, um, I don't know if they're, they're like a ketchup bottle or something. Like, you know, there's like uh, ones you get from the dollar store that are like clear and you can put like uh, fluid in, like ketchup or oil or whatever you want it. Well, I had one of those, and it had uh, some some blood with uh, water mixed in. So I pretty much just went in, took that, and pretend I was being I was being blood. <laughs> would the would the sequel to be the you know to this be the man who peed blood and then went to the ER? 
<laughs> went to urgent care. I mean, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> the third one is the man who has the man who peed blood, went to urgent care, and now takes antibiotics. <laughs> There you go, perfect trilogy. Yeah, I, I, I think probably parts two and three might be a little boring for people, but uh, <laughs> not as interesting as being blood. And then the second trailer on there, which has Amy in it, um, is Action Figure Massacre. What does she have against action figures? I mean, they attacked her first. Wow. Funny story about that. Um, that's actually an entire uh, an entire movie. We have it shot. We, I just haven't, I just got lazy and haven't got it edited yet. And I'm still, um, uh, there was a guy that was supposed to do voices for me for the action figures. And I still haven't got those voices yet. So I know he's busy. So I'm not like, I like, got, uh, you know, I'm not blaming him or anything. I, I just haven't got the chance to even edit it. So I can't, I can't really say anything about, you know, him not, you know, giving me the voices or anything, you know what I mean? Right. So the, uh, the someday. Now, well, I get, okay. So the, the man who peed blood, I get what that's about. Action figure massacre. What, what would that be? Like, what's the story for that? It's, I want to say too much because I still want to edit it at some point. Sure. It's pretty much, uh, a dude that does an evil experiment. The toys come to life and create habit. And if you, as you see in the trailer, the, the toys bleed for some reason. I don't know <laughs> why, but they bleed. Sure. I mean, why not? If they, if if they're attacking people, why can't they bleed? I mean, hey. It makes no, I mean, that's the beauty of filmmaking. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't, and you don't have to explain it at all. In fact, it's better that you don't. So leave it up to people's it's imagination. It's all to your imagination, exactly. Well, yeah, because a lot of the times, if you, um, if you explain too much, people can find fault in it. But if you don't explain it, then there is no fault. It just is what it is. Pretty much. Yeah, you know, so that's, you know, just don't explain it. It's fine. Um, and then we get into the our feature presentation, little kind of promo thing, and that gets into the movie. So we have the um, the original short. Is there a scene added on the bus? Like you're you're on the bus going to work, and then I thought I saw an extra shot of the bus in the in the there in the longer version. Maybe. There may be, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I don't think so, but I could I could have threw an extra one in there. Okay. And then, um, so now let's get into the, um, uh, like the, the, the color in black and white. So what, um, what did, so now that we're in the longer version, you have more to decide on, um, you know, where do these black and white and color images go? How, how, how did that come about? Like I said, uh, I really didn't plan it. That. I just thought it would look cool to have, especially the scene where, you know, I'm in that, like, in that basement. I'm in the, uh, uh, like, a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere where I'm not supposed to be, which I was, I was interpreting as, uh, as my going into madness. I was going, I was, and I bounce back from madness or insanity and all that. That makes any sense? Well, sure. And since it's cosmic horror, it doesn't have to make exact sense. I mean, you could be anywhere you want. You could be in the attic. That's fine. I mean, I mean, it's Lovecraft. I mean, yeah, Love, Love, Lovecraft. Every almost every story ends with someone going insane. So that's pretty much where I where I was going with it. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, man. It's very dry out here today. They just don't need to be coughing so much. Um, the uh, the basement that you were in was that your dad's house? No, that was actually my father in law's house. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, you you got some good locations. See, we don't have basements out here. We have we have attics, maybe, but uh, 
Yeah, we don't we don't have basements. That's a pretty cool looking basement. I, li- I live in an apartment building, so I have no storage. Pretty much the room I'm in right now is my storage unit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it I don't know, I'm just seeing some of those locations that you got were, were pretty cool. Yeah, I want to uh um I do have a, a, a note on here about your apartment. So I'm I'm gonna bring that up in, in, in a little bit here. Okay. Um so the um so now you and Amy talk about the package for like a website. Like you're going to be doing like an unpacking. Is that is that uh, for something else or was that actually all meant to be part of the film? Oh, it's it, it's been a while since I've done since I've done this movie. I'm trying to remember everything. Um I think I was going to say I think I um on that DVD, I think there was a bonus feature, which I think is the unboxing video I did on YouTube. Um, that was pretty much what we were going to do. It was, it was I was incorporating the YouTube video into. Um, I don't think I intended it that way, but that was pretty much what I was intent. I was going for. Okay. Pretty much what I was talking about in that particular scene. Sure. Okay. Okay. And then we get to Mr. Dane. We get to t- we get some teeth. And and uh, now the one thing that this I found to be kind of funny. I don't know if it was intentional or not. So you're passed out on the floor in the bathroom, and you have a heater aimed at you. And I'm like, well, that's nice that he passed out on the floor. At least he's warm. You know, it's like it, it, if you're gonna pass out somewhere, have it next to a heater. That was also my father-in-law's house. I mean, like I said, uh, I uh, I pretty much did everything spare the moment. I I didn't um, plan a lot of these scenes. That's why I was like, well, let's film here. This looks cool. Hey, there's a basement here. Um, there's a water heater. Let's film here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I I. I I mean, I, I don't know what else to say, but I just, <laughs> I just filmed it and there it was. <laughs> and well, the good thing is continuity is when you leave the bathroom, the heater is still there. So it, it, it's not like you had the heater and then there's no heater. So at least it matched continuity wise with you on the floor and then leaving. So I, I appreciate the well, continuity. Then, well, then uh, if the heater wasn't there, it at least makes sense to you know love crack wise, right? Oh, it's we can look at it that way. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then um, there's uh, you're worshiping the Cthulhu uh, statue, so you're you're really into it, and that's that's when I think I I said to myself, "Why was it made in China under it?" And then oh, you just realize that this is all in his head or something. This is like the statue doesn't mean anything. It's just made in China, which you proved to me correct that it was made in China, but we're not supposed to made in China. <laughs> Um, and I then I didn't even know it was made of China until you pointed it out, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I went crazy for nothing. This thing was made in China. Not even made oh, by Lovecraft. Uh, and then now we have um, not just you passed out, you know, or passing out, but Amy is passed out um, in the stairwell, and and she wakes up and kind of has her her journey up those those flights of stairs a lot of stairs yes and, and you could tell a little bit of that from her walking up and, and once again I, I, I chuckled a little bit because it reminded me of the scene from Ghostbusters from the first movie where they realize the elevator is out of order and they have to walk up like what is it like 20 flights and by the time yeah. they hit like what is it like floor 10 they're, they're like ready to die from exhaustion <laughs> So I thought of that with her. So yeah, you haven't seen that reminded me of a great movie. So there you go. There you go. Gotta have that. I Ghostbusters and I didn't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I made a note here that says um, that it looks like she might be going to the roof. Is there no elevator? Ghostbusters. <laughs> so what, but was there an elevator? Yes, there's an elevator. We you just, do you just chose it. Stairs. Stairs are better. I just chose the stairs because um, I don't know. I mean, it's we 
my apartment building, there's a lot of uh, elderly folk. So no one really uses the stairs that much. So I figured, hey, it's somewhere where I know I can film and no one's going to come in and ruin the shot. Oh, see, so that makes sense. So it, it's a cool scene visually because you get all those stairs, you're seeing how many floors she's going up, and it's just practical for filmmaking. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, so that's good. That's good. See, you, you are a filmmaker. Not even, even if it's just an amateur filmmaker, you're still a filmmaker. Um, now, this is where I'm going to mention your apartment. So I wrote in here, um, Amy, an apartment. Now, are we getting a little meta here? Because I saw in the background when Amy entered, there's all those movies and, and all that stuff, but sitting right there is your movie. Uh, <laughs> I did intend that, actually. I, it faced right I out to the be, camera. <laughs> I thought it would be funny um, because I printed out a copy that didn't have a spine. I, the uh, one I bought, I uh, had had made Gukunaki was uh, the original seven minute, uh, the seven minute version. And I had, it on, I had it on a DVD and I was like, you know what? So I put it up there as just to be funny. So <laughs> it's basically like a little Easter egg pretty much. Sure, well, I caught the Easter egg, I found it. So <laughs> I got it. Um, a million dollars, no. <laughs> I will send you my address. I will send you my PayPal account. You can put it right in there, please. Um, uh, I got my wallet. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Two hours later, <laughs> I'm still sitting here. He said he's coming back. Um, so with you guys kind of going mad and all that type of stuff, well, you 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 kind of wake up and, and uh, like, was it a dream? It may have been. I mean, thing. or or was I going? Was my character going mad? We don't know. Yeah, yeah, because Amy's just doing her thing. She's sitting there doing a thing. You wake up, but there's Cthulhu sitting right there, yeah. and you um and you also. Are my notes not. Oh yeah, here we go. I flipped it on the wrong side. So um. <clears throat> Yeah, so I uh, I wrote, uh, let's see, what happened in the case such a good. So um, I wrote down, yeah, like Donald questioning what, what was happening uh, with like the case statue. Um, you know, uh, this is all done in, in color. You take the, uh, the statue out to destroy it. Mm -hmm. And that's when, when we think maybe that this has been, been all a dream. Because as we know, we, you can't destroy those type of statues. They always come back. Because if you put it in the garbage, it would be back in your house the next day. It happens all the time in movies. So, and then I did notice in the, um, that the Cthulhu statue was sitting on an H.P. Lovecraft book and an Edgar Allan Poe book. Purpose? Purposely? You have a, you have a good eye, man. You do. <laughs> I you're, look for you're, these. Things. You're calling out things that I don't even remember. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh yeah, I did do that. Oh, I, I will pause the film and actually look for stuff in the background to be like, okay. In um in the the Dustin Hubbard one that just went up, um I commented on a Slaughter Daughter that way in the background there's a bunch of paperback books and one of them is the Bachman books from Stephen King. I could see the spine and recognize the color, the skull, and all that. And he's like, how, how did you notice that? <laughs> because I, I, I didn't even see that back there. And I'm just like, I looked for that. I paused it, and I looked at all the books to see if I could recognize the spine. <laughs> so just like you, because yeah. so there is so much stuff in your apartment that it, it's like a, like, a, like a dream fan's heaven with how much stuff you have in there. I was looking for stuff back there that I could you know, talk to you about. Yeah. So it, it uh, yeah, I mean, you, you got a whole thing. I mean, just where you're sitting right now. I mean, what you got posters and, and all that stuff behind you. So video games. I do have a whole bunch of Stephen King books. Nice. Where are those right behind? Oh, okay. I see them. They're right there. 
Well, yeah. it's actually... I don't know if you can see them very well. See, Penny was. Oh, they're hardback. Okay. Oh, wow. You're better than me. Nice. So what do you have behind you then? What are those? Um, those are video games. All video games? Okay. I'm, an, okay. I'm a nerd. I admit it. Hey, it's great to be a nerd. Uh, nerds are awesome. Mila Holovich, they, you know, married a nerd and has two kids with him. So, you know, can't complain about that. Yeah. Um, so what else do we have here? We have, um, you do have one shot in the elevator. I noticed that. Um, then you're, you're on the road. You go out to the woods. I wrote down here, love these locations. And um, then uh, you got the sledgehammer. And um, there is a shot in this I really like. Um, there's, it's a shot looking up of you. And you got the sledgehammer. And the clouds are actually moving in the background. And I went back and I watched it and I'm like, did he speed the shot up or something? Because it's a really nice shot of just you, sledgehammer, clouds moving in the background. Did you have to do any effects with that or is that just natural? No, that was all just raw footage right there. I was, there was no editing, no nothing. The only editing I really did in the movie besides changing the color from, from color to black and white and some of the effects was really the reverse uh, after that, after I supposedly destroyed the statue, which that took a lot longer than needed to be. Because I was pretty much the whole entire film reversed. <laughs> yes. And okay, so I have, um, okay, so Donald, okay, so he hits the Cthulhu figure and then footage goes like in reverse. So, which I thought was interesting, and I like that, because was this, you, you destroy the statue, allegedly, it reverses everything, and then you wake up. So was this just, you know, yeah, the kind of like a dream, and he's, you know, about to experience everything, or did by hitting the Cthulhu thing, did you go back in time? Like, what was your, your kind of thought with that? I guess I was thinking more along the lines of like, you know, a dream or it was like maybe destroying the statue, took him back, but opened another timeline. Mm. Maybe something like that. I mean, I'm, I leave, I leave a lot of my movies up for interpretation. So, I mean, it's whatever you want it to be. I mean, I, I was like, you no, know, it could mean really a bunch of different things. You know what I mean? I'll, I've always loved movies that did that, where they'll like leave it on a cliffhanger. It's like it's up to your interpretation. What happens? You know, did he? Did the character die? Did the character live? Did the character, you know, have to go on another journey? You know what I mean? Yeah, because it definitely seems like a, a definitely a dream or, or a nightmare, and uh, <clears throat> kind of almost like Final Destination. You know, they they go through the explosion, they wake up, and then it's like, oh crap. So would your would would your character know after waking up and then seeing the Cthulhu you know statue? Are things going to continue, or is he just going to get rid of the statue? Like what? If you had to make it even longer, what what would happen? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> what if he I, just left the statue there? I mean, that's he seems now that he has the statue that it's just gonna cur be cursed whatever he does that statue's gonna come back mm -hmm. i mean it's a possibility because if you see at the end like my character kind of like holds his head and hears like that like a ringing i think there's a ring and then basically i fall to the floor did i die did i you know did cthulhu finally kill me i don't know hmm. i have I, it, it's it, it's so maybe someday i might revisit that does dane know what would happen his character um probably not no i mean he he's a bigger lovecraft fan than me but i i think he's like i don't even know if he knows what's going on in that movie is he the one who sent it to you like the character did his character send you the box he sent me the box yes 
Um, it was basically stuff I bought off him. I think I bought some movies or something off of him. And he, uh, I forget what was in the box. I think he threw in a bunch of tea bags or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I mean, like, did, did his character send you the box? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I thought you were asking like who who the box. Well, now now about. we know where where you personally got it from. But yeah, did did his yeah. character send it I, to you? I would say probably yes. It was probably him because it would make sense because if you remember when you see the shot of his mouth, he goes he goes hail to the uh, great Cthulhu, made my sacrifice be pleasing to you and the old gods or something like that. So, so it was like. Being sacrificed to Cthulhu, or so is, it failed. Could it be breaking the curse? Would be sending it to somebody else, and now you got it, and he's okay. So now you have to mail it to somebody because you you had no idea at the beginning of the film. It's like literally the mystery box that was sent to you, and you had no idea who it was. You didn't order anything, so now you just have to find an address in the phone book or online. And just mail it to somebody else. <clears throat> and when they open it, and there's the statue, then maybe you're, it's, you're, the curse is broken. The sequel. I, sell, I, I send it to John Ward. <laughs> now, what if I send it back to you? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> Whoa, man, this is getting heavy. Um, yeah, because yeah, then at the end you yeah you kind of like grab your head and then it and then it ends because that's that's how these things have to end. So and it's another film that you um, it's listed as just editor and director. So this is much longer. This is like about thirty minutes. So did you have a script on this one? No, I didn't have a script on. Outline. I, like I said, no. I I um, just basically started throwing it together. I I um. I don't know how I kept it going with the continuity. I didn't really think it through. I just kind of filmed. Well, a lot of the movies, what I do is I do film things in order, like as the movie's going on. I don't film like the, the last scene or like the scene, uh, the first scene, then film something in the middle. I film like as the story's going on, I film from beginning to end when I do things. So, that's okay. probably why it made a little more sense. Um, um, or like when do you movie. when you do a feature, will you be doing like a script or an outline or anything? Yeah, when I do a, when I do a feature, I'll be doing a script. Like everything I've done, especially for like like for example with the movie I sent you, I I did do a script for that one, and I made sure that you know I followed like a guideline. So I didn't mess anything up. You know what I mean? Oh, the, yeah, the blind idiot God. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. With me for for those films, it just had to be you know cosmic horror. <laughs> Pretty much, that's about it. But yeah, it was nice. People were sending me scripts, and they were sending me kind of like like rough versions of the film, and and it was nice kind of seeing the progress of some of these. So you know, so I I definitely appreciated that. So. That will be out this year, no matter what. I gotta, I gotta get it out this year. So I, I, I got all the movies. Everything is waiting there. It, it's just I gotta film the stuff with Drew Marvick, and then we're, you know, and then we're, we're good. So it will be out this Looking year. Forward to it, man. Yeah, so am I coming out. So, um, so now we're done with that one, and then the next one is Death Ring, and that is uh, two minutes and four seconds. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. That's one of the first ones I watched from you, and uh, this one I like. Um, I like that it's rainy, that it takes place in the woods. Uh, there's this creepy voice doing the, you know, rain, rain. You know, that kind of that song that goes along with, you know, with uh, when it rains out. Um, there was some nice, you know, kind of like Evil Dead POV shots with it. And um, I like how it kind of like comes up and hits right on you. Um, you're eating, looks like gummy worms, maybe, or gummy bears uh, that fall to the nice. ground. <laughs> um, so how, how did this come about? How did you come out, you know, with the title for Death Rain? How, how did this idea come, come up? 
I mean, just like everything else, just <laughs> I uh well, we had a, a real bad down downpour that day. And uh I was just outside on the porch eating my gummy worms, like seen. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I make an interesting movie. And I was like, what what can I film? You know, and that's when the gear started turning. It's like, you know what? Let me make some weird uh movie about uh a rain that kills people i i, I didn't think it through i but i was like well <laughs> you know just film it and see what happens and that's pretty much what i did yeah that that once again is it's just, it's, it's, it's such a great location i mean it's it's it just that rain just looks so good and 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 especially with having all those trees in the background and and all of that yeah. i mean I really wish I could take advantage of that type of stuff. And, and, and I'm jealous, damn it. I'm jealous that all I have is, is desert and um, roads, desert and roads. Um, so, it, it, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. And um, did you shoot that one? Because I, I don't think it had credits on it. So was that all you or did Amy or anybody help you? That was all me. That was me. Uh, basically, I shot the... Uh the scenes that were on that were on the porch and then i did like a whole long uh take uh where i was basically going like you said the evil dead style where it was me like going from like the path going into the house and i just did that all in one take and i just, and when i edited it i just uh i cut a little bit go back to me go back to the to the video cutting and you know kind of like cut it up into pieces so it looks like it was coming after me but i was hearing something i was hearing the haunted uh song yeah and it so when when you shoot something like this because there are those evil dead shots is it just like 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 i was saying like your your hand holding the phone or do you have like a selfie stick do you have anything like that to kind of help you out? Me hold, just me holding the phone. And I was just like, you know, I probably looked ridiculous walking around like this, <laughs> going all over the place. <laughs> My head. I can imagine the neighbors. What is that guy doing? Honey, honey, it, it's, that, it's that man again doing weird things. We need to call the police on him. He, he, <laughs> there's something wrong with him. Oh, should we help police. him? Thankfully, nobody called the police yet. So we <laughs> he both he, he's eating gummy worms in the rain. That's strange, honey. No, just leave him alone. Leave him alone. He's doing his thing. Just leave him alone. He's fine. He's not hurting anyone. Not <laughs> yeah, just leave him alone. So it's because I've noticed at times with some of your stuff is I'll see. See if I can kind of get your arm kind of like this when yeah. you're filming, or it'll be a little bit below. So do you use a tripod or anything or like one of those little tripods that come with the phone or is it all kind of like setting the phone up against something and your a arm extended? A lot of times is uh, me finding somewhere where I can set the phone up, whether it's up against a rock or a tree or um, um, in the, uh, um, the first movie we talked about, the, uh, uh, the house at the end of Church Street. There was an, a chair out there that I somehow, it was like a folding chair. Somehow I got it to position right on the edge where the seat and the, uh, the bars are that, that go to the back. Somehow I managed to get it there and stayed. <laughs> and I was like, perfect. Stay there. Don't move. <laughs> so does that kind of dictate where your shot is? Like you might go, oh man, I really like it back here. But this has an area for me to put the phone. So does that dictate more of your shot? Well, if it's somewhere I really want to film, I'll like try to like find something I can put it on, rather be a chair or um, a rock or something or something like that. Like uh, when I did that scene for uh, Mystery Box of Horrors. That was actually um, my phone leaning up against the Cthulhu 
uh, statue. <laughs> As I had it on on the uh, thing where I had it set up where it was kind of looking up at me with the sky. I, I was like, well, how am I going to do this? And I was like, you know what? So I took the statue. I had it in a box that I didn't want it to get ruined. So I put it back on the, on the uh, tree stump and I put it up and angled it just enough so it would, it would show me with the hammer. I was like, hey, whatever works. Yeah, I mean, you got your money's worth then out of that statue. If, if that statue is now a crew member, you know, <laughs> maybe he should get a credit. You know? Co-camera maybe. Cthulhu. <laughs> Camera man Cthulhu. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you have to. Sometimes I've used Coke bottles or I'll use a brick or I'll use, you know, whatever is around me, you know, and, and just, uh, it, it's just that's indie filmmaking. You just got to, you know, do whatever you can do. Work with what you have. Oh, yeah. 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 And it definitely sounds like you do. So, you know, without having tripods and no, no lights, no nothing like that. It's all natural lighting. There's, um, with a couple uh, of shots, I have used a ring light. If you know what I'm talking about, there's a. Uh... Yeah. I should have it right here. One of these bad boys. I've used yes. this a couple of times. Okay. Ring lights um, are good. Everybody should have one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, or um, I've actually used a regular lamp where I took the shade off. I've used those before. Um, not not um, anything in the YouTube videos. Um, I was doing some practice ones back in the day, which never got finished. This is the first time I actually, believe it or not, uh, these, the first two movies we talked about, these are movies that I've actually finished to completion. There was a lot of movies that started and never finished. So I made up my mind that I'm going to start uh, filming it and, and keep going until it's done. Good. Well, will some of those ones that aren't finished get finished? Um, Probably not because they are trash. <laughs> I mean, like, like um, uh, when I was, um, I want to say, uh, I was, I was, me and my wife just got married, and we were trying to. I was, I was doing some weird movies, like you know, just to kind of like, you know, get the feel of it. But they were shot on these like real crappy webcam. And it looks worse than a VHS tape. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. These, these 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 won't see the light of day. <laughs> I mean, you you could have the uh, uh uh just have it called like some bands do this instead of the best of they do the worst of. So you, you could have of. like yeah like like these eight or nine films that we're talking about as the best of, like the best of Donald Wills, and then you could have uh, the worst of Donald Wills and put those on there. <laughs> there you go. And sell them as two two different volumes. Well, I mean, I don't know if these films exist anymore. But <laughs> I did I did lose a lot of these movies, so I mean, wow. Oh. <laughs> ah, yeah. You got the new ones, so you got nine new ones, so that that's all they really have. Yeah. Um. So now we're going to move on to the next one, which is called Deadly Invasion. Um. This had a date on it of uh, twenty twenty one. So this is last year. It's uh, five minutes and 20 seconds. It stars uh, both you and Amy, um, kind of a, a one location type of thing. Um, I did like that the camera is floating around this abandoned house. Um, and then we cut to three hours later. And this is, I think, the film where it looks through the window, like that little square window. Yeah. And I went, oh, wait, this, yeah, does somebody actually live there? Because I really thought the house was abandoned. And um, probably just because the film said it was abandoned. But um, so I started questioning, like, hmm, I think somebody lives there, or a squatter maybe, or somebody. But you, like you said, it's your dad's place. Um, it then cuts to three hours later. Amy's on the bed, knock at the door. She goes to the door and she sees a masked man outside. And that masked man is you, terrorizing her. Or is it? it oh. Or is, oh, well, it's true, you got a mask on. I don't know, it could be somebody else. Could be something else. Maybe it's not even a man. 
could be a creature or no. something like that. Um, so where did, um, I'll get into a little bit more of, uh, uh, of what goes on in, in the film, but um, this is a, uh, where was this show? Was this your dad's house or? or, or yeah, this was my dad's house. Uh, we, were, um, we were staying up there for like a couple of months. And uh, I've, uh, Death Rain was actually another one that was uh, we were when we were still staying up there um, because uh, uh, his uh, his uh, he was living with my sister for a while. Um, uh, he had a uh, COVID back in uh, January. Oh, sorry. No. And uh, he 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 he's good now. He's he's good. Thank God. Good to hear. Um, sorry. Uh, anyway, um, no, no, no. We, uh, I, I know six people who got it, so it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, well, anyway, uh, he recovered. He's good. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Uh, but he went to live with my sister for a while, and during uh, the summer, uh, his pit bull had a, uh, a uterus infection, Ooh. so we had to go Ooh. get her fixed, and we and we had to go stay stay at his house for a little while with her. So, and uh, after we got her fixed, you know, medication and all that, which thankfully she do, she's doing a lot better now. So that's good. Good to hear. And while I was yeah. there, I was like, well, might as well film some stuff, you know, do some, make a do movie. something. Sure. While, <laughs> I mean, so that's why I decided to make that one. I did that one during the day. And a lot of times I had to wait till my dad to leave because he's the type of person that he would like walk in on you. Like, well, what are you doing? Like, oh, what, what you doing here, son? Doing? Can I help you? <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> Back in my day, we had Super 8s and all that stuff. Yeah. And VHS cameras. <laughs> Even that. <laughs> well, and where did, where, did you, where did you get the map? Um, where did I get that? eBay, I think. Was I, it planned for that was, film, or did you just like the map? No, actually, I bought it for something else. I don't remember what I originally was going to use it for. It was another movie that I had planned, and it just so happens one of those movies that the brain thinks, oh, I want to do this. And then later on, nothing ever comes of it. So that was pretty much what ended up happening there. So I figured when we were doing this one, uh, I said, well, I have this mask. Might as well put used to it. And there you go. Okay. So, so the, wasted. yeah, you, you get your money back. You know, that, that's, you got to make your money on, on the, you know, with the mask. So you got to put it in a film and right there, you just made your money back on it. So. You know, so he he enters, she freaks out, he enters the house, and um, she runs, and uh, so he enters the house, man, and man, the intruder uh, finds Amy, and she screams. Once again, like you said, you leave things open to the viewer's mind to, for them to interpret it. So um, was this by chance, like, did he kill her? Is this a game that they play? Maybe they're a married couple and he puts the mask on and she like gets all freaked out and then, you know, and then they have some fun once the, you know, once it's all done. I mean, what's, what happens to Amy? I don't know. It might, <laughs> maybe, maybe at some point I will make a sequel for the, something. Maybe, maybe some, maybe I can uh, make something where I, I don't know. I, I thought about maybe doing something more with that. Um, I, I haven't really thought through on it, but that was one of the things I thought about after doing it. I was like, maybe I could do something else. Maybe we'll see. Maybe a, maybe like a couple, maybe a little while later or something. You know what I mean. Do your films have any messages in them? Political or, or violence or movies cause violence or... In, in anything like that in your films or are they, you know, just, you know, she looks out, he's a masked guy and he, something bad happens to her. Pretty much. I mean, 
I the only reason I wanted to do that one because I've always been a fan of those like home invasion movies. And I I thought, you know what, why don't I make my own? I think we watched one the night before I we even did that. And I was like, you know what? I'm thinking and I I get inspired by this simplest little things. I I I could just see a picture of something and I'd be like, ooh, I can make a movie out of that. Or or you know, you know, I'll hear someone say something like um a couple of years ago. Um here's a it's a funny story. Um, uh, I n- never made the movie yet, yet. So we'll, we'll see. It might happen. It may not happen. Um, uh, we, where I live at now, it a lot of people were joking and calling it the ghetto. So they, uh, up at my work, they had my boss had these little. Uh, uh, calendar things would have like a weird fact. I think it was called like 365 facts to scare the crap out of you. <laughs> and uh, one of them was something about coconut crabs can eat eat can eat a chicken or a small or a, up to a small child. <laughs> I was like, whoa, like that's not cool. And she goes, and she made the joke. She goes, um. Well, this is, we're going to send these down to the town you're in. And I said, it doesn't say they eat people. And she goes, the ghetto ones do. Oh. (laughs) So I was going to make make ghetto coconut crabs. Ah. (laughs) That might happen someday. I don't know, but we'll see. (laughs) (laughs) And people can relate because there's a ghetto in in every area. So. Pretty much. Yeah. It's just a it's just a low rent area, so it's just yeah that'd be funny Pretty to much. see. Yeah, I, I I could watch that <laughs> just with a title like that, people would watch it. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and on uh, Deadly Invasion, so once again, it, it's filmed, edited, and directed by you. So see, this this is where once again I'm going to go back to you saying that you're not a filmmaker or amateur filmmaker. This takes smarts. You you to come up with this stuff so quickly, like like death ray. I would have been, well, crap, it's raining out. I can't go film out there. I guess I'll watch a movie. You, on the other hand, said, I'm going to go make a movie in the rain. And you made a two-minute and four-second movie. doesn't matter if it's two minutes or 20 minutes or two hours. You made a two-minute film where I think a lot of people would have just gone, well, you know, rainy movie day. Let's go watch Freddy or something. This is where it's just, this is smart. And, and if you could just be in a house like your dad and then be like, well, we're here, let's make a movie. And then you do Deadly Invasion. Once again, it's five minutes, 20 seconds. Doesn't matter. That's smart. I would, I don't think I would have thought of that. I think I would have thought like, well, we can't shoot here. It's my dad's house. Don't kill me. So I, still I don't think my dad knows I filmed this. <laughs> More, more. Sh- <laughs> keep that on the route. Yeah. No one needs to know. <laughs> um, and then, okay, so we're done with that. And now we are on to um, The Fly That Wouldn't Die. And this is uh, three minutes and oh. uh, 15 seconds. It is black and white. Um, it's uh, 2021. And there's, there's no voices. There's no dialogue or anything in this. Uh, just music. And you are angry in this film. You are angry. You give those really angry faces because of that fly. And uh, so tell me about the fly that would not die. Oh, boy, where do we begin? Um, (laughs) I think the entire joke of that movie was... um, You hear me, Harden? Yes, I can hear you. You're good now. Uh, you just uh, went out uh, for. I had a phone call coming in. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, we uh, when we were at my dad's house again, and it was during the summer, and 
for some reason, we had like a swarm of flies. And I swear, once them things come in, you can't get rid of them. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, out here, we got cockroaches. Ooh. So for me, it'd be the cockroach that wouldn't die, because that, that's what we mostly have out here. Uh, we have crickets. We have black crickets also. We get them a lot. But we did have, a couple years ago, locusts. If you go onto YouTube and look up like Las Vegas locusts, they're everywhere. Like the sky was black. They got into people's cars and homes. They were all over. I work in a storage facility, so they got into people's units. They were everywhere. That that's a movie by itself. I mean, if you you know if you go to look at some of these casinos and the lights are, are really bright or shining, they're all over those lights. It was crazy. It's only happened once, so it's. In, in in certain terms, yes, I, I understand with, with the annoyance of, of yeah. these, these many flies. So well, we um, it, it's like no matter how many uh, fly traps we put up, we put those like sticky fly traps up, uh, the things that hang from the ceiling. Like no matter what you did, how many times you swatted at them, they they were smart, man. They were smart. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> so she, uh, my wife said one day she goes. Because that fly just won't die, no matter how many times <laughs> I hit it. Like she swatted, she literally like slapped it with her hand, and it just went flying that way. And then later on, it would come back. <laughs> that's why I made the movie, uh, the fly that wouldn't die. Well, and, and the thing that works about it is your face, because you you look angry. You just get more and more angry, and you just have this this look on your face. And uh, but once again, see you're using what's around you. You saw rain. You went out and made a movie. You got flies. Let's make a movie about the fly that wouldn't die. You know, so it, it's uh, you use stuff to your advantage. And um, that whole this whole three minute and fifteen seconds solely rests on your expression. So you know, I I, I was into it. I thought it was funny. I like your big uh, uh, your like giant fly swatter that you use in it. Um, you know, so is, is but once again, is that a fly swatter you had, or did you go out and buy that for the film? No, that was one of that was one, that was one my dad had. <laughs> uh, he he had he always had one like up. Uh, if you if you look in the movie, you can see the cal there, there was a calendar up on his wall, and he had a nail sticking out. He would put it on there. <laughs> so we, I was like, yeah, I'll take it off. I like, try to swat it. I think I killed it, and then it came back to life, or didn't die at all. It, so, is that how the, is that the ending of the film? That you just don't know if you killed the fly or not? Well, if you if if, if that, I don't know. If, uh, yeah, I uh, where I think I killed it, and then all of a sudden you hear the buzzing again, and then I get angry and I go, "No!" Right. <laughs> So it it just it just lives, man. You could do sequels to all these movies. You you leave all these open ended. I mean, there we go. The fly that wouldn't die too. Yep, and that's one that you uh, directed, edited, and starred in. So that was was that all you filming everything by yourself? Yeah, I also used uh, that was a like a VHS style. I, I made it like a shot on video style. Yeah, it's got like the grain and it's got the, uh, uh, looks more filmy. What, why did you decide that for this particular one and not the other ones? I mean, why not? <laughs> I have an app. I have a, uh, I, I, I downloaded an app. I think it was called VHS. Um, I'm not 100% sure what it was called, but it's basically a VHS filter. And it basically films in four by three like an old school VHS tape. And I've always I've always kind of liked the uh, the uh, VHS look. I mean, I don't know. And some it, people don't like it, and then some people do. No, it looks good. VHS is always good. There's nothing wrong with VHS. My my problem with with people shooting something like a VHS is that they make it seem like it's like from ancient Egypt or something like that. Like it's, you can go to Goodwill and I've said this many times and grab any VHS tape that they have 
knowing that it's like 20, 30 years old and it plays perfectly fine. You know, there, there's no yeah. scratches. There's no, there's nothing on it. It plays perfectly fine. So, mm -hmm. but all of us, and I'm guilty of this too, is you'll do something in VHS and it's got to be grainy. It's got to have the pops. It's got to have like, uh, like, the, like the tape is almost breaking. And it's just like, no, mm -hmm. you, you can play 10 VHS tapes and they all look the same. But it's, um, but we all think that VHS looks a, a particular way now. It, when it really it looks so doesn't. terrible. It looks so yeah grainy. It looks like it's, um, it's it's turning like rainbow colors or something like that. Yeah. Like what? Oh, yeah, and it's not. I've actually watched a movie like that. Um, it was a movie that was done like that, and it was intended to be that way, and it was actually pretty good. I have I have to, I have to uh send you the link to it. I think you'll okay. really pick out of it. Did you film you this? Get another, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh no, get another what? I was gonna I was gonna say uh, maybe you can see if you can get this guy for your one filmmaker, one film. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, definitely. Send me the link, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm always interested in checking stuff out. So um with this, did now you said you got that app to make it look like VHS. Did you have to film it in the film it using that app? Or did you take what yeah. you filmed and then put it into the app? You can use like what you have and put it into the app, or you can you can do both. Oh, nice. But okay, this, that's convenient. For this, uh, um, I think it was like three dollars. I, I if, for, for if you haven't figured it out, I'm a cheapskate. I'm not gonna. Lie. <laughs> I, I I don't like you spending any more. I don't like spending any more money than I have to. I mean. Hence why I didn't have a good camera for all these years. Well, it's not like we're getting paid for this. You know, we're, we're, you know, it doesn't matter how many movies a lot of us make. We're not making any money. Any money that you do make back is just replacing the money that you spend. Pretty much. You know, it's not like you can buy a house from it or a car. So it, it's, it's just one of those. The millions and millions of dollars, man. You make millions of dollars. That's true. That's true. You do. Um, okay, next one. And um, so this is our second to the last. Um, this one is called All About the Blood. And it's one minute and uh, nine seconds. And um, basically, you're, um, you're being interviewed. I'm, I'm assuming you're playing a serial killer. You're being interviewed by a reporter. And um, you stab um, Amy, what was that like? Do you, do, is that weird at all? Like, like actually killing your wife on, on film? Does that, is that weird at all? Or is she like into it? Is she like, I mean, yeah. she don't care. She, she, knows, <laughs> she, she, she knows that. I mean, I, that's the awesome thing about my wife. You know, she, uh, I can ask her to do the stupidest thing. I, I hey, <laughs> let's do this. And then she's like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. but uh that uh this movie here is actually was actually the movie i shot for tony newton okay now, this is actually the very first movie i shot like the very 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 first the very first movie i shot oh wow okay um the uh how uh he um Put up on Facebook that he was looking for uh, 60 second um, movies, and he, it's for his anthology called 60 Seconds to Live, which is coming out this year. Actually, which I'm pretty oh, excited cool. to check it out. Um, I don't know. I think it's uh, April 5th. I have it written down over here. Uh, April 5th is, is coming out. So sweet. I, uh, I filmed it at the. I want to say. In 2020, um, right, right before I got called back to work when the pandemic started, when the pandemic was starting to ease up, well, not ease up, but you know what I mean. Um, we were allowing people to go back to work and all that. Um, I filmed it right before I went back to work. And so that was my very first experience making a movie. So when, when, do you, when did you actually start making these films was it 2020 because i know a lot of them don't have dates so is it like 2020 2021 now 2022 or was it earlier than that 20, 2020 was the first 
was the first time I actually attempted to make a, make the movie with what I did for Tony Newton. Um, I, I've always wanted to make a movie for years. I just never, um, I never, uh, like found the encouragement to do it. It wasn't until, um, I watched, uh, um, uh, Tony Maciel's, uh, SOV Horror YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he interviewed Gore Phil. And I, and I seen him, uh, you interviewed Gore Phil for also. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, he, he, uh, he brought up you a few times. Yeah. Yeah. And he, um, uh, he actually mentioned on, uh, uh, on here as well that, uh, he, um, he got inspired by David The Rock Nelson, I think his name is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, David said, The uh, Rock Nelson, yeah. Yeah, where well, he said that, uh, that um, the, the quote where he said, uh, I don't want to hear, I don't have the money, I don't want to hear, just go out and just do it. And that's kind of what inspired me. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go do it. It might be trash, but I'm going to do it. Well, and, and, and your first one could be, you know, it, it, it's your first one and that's acceptable. That's perfectly fine. You know, some, sometimes it is and sometimes it, it isn't, but you do need that spark. You do need that, uh, that whatever it is to all of a sudden click and go, I can do this. Mm-hmm. And then you just go out and do it. Well, I mean, I think I was watching a movie uh, before that. Um, th- th- this was like the first spark I got. I-, I got like two different sparks. That was like the main one with that. When when Gore said that, um, I was watching um, someone's movie. I'm not gonna mention who because I don't like to bash anybody. Um, and I was like, you know, I could probably do this a little bit better. I don't know. I I was kind of naive at the time. I was very. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I can do this better. I was very cocky until, and you you probably know this as well. Until you've made your first movie, you don't know how hard it is to make a movie. It's it, not it, something you yeah. can just. Not something you can just out of the fly. I'm gonna make a movie and it's gonna be great. No, it takes time. It takes. You have to make sure the lighting is right. You have to make sure that you know. You know, you said the line right. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. This is that. That's why I find it funny when when people just say, "Oh, I, I'm just gonna go make a movie," and it's like, really? Try sitting down and cast. You know, like try to get once you have the cast, try to schedule. Scheduling is the most difficult thing that you I think that you do in in making a film because you got your cast set, you're ready to go. We're filming on the 15th, three weeks from now type of thing and then all of a sudden you you hear that message i can't film on the 15th i could do the 14th and you're like fuck that messes everything up one person can screw up like 20 other people and yeah. it, it, it's very difficult and people think that it's easy that's why i mean if 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 i do bash i feel that it is legitimate bashing that it you're a filmmaker You've made films. You know how films work. Why does your movie look this way? You know, it's it's not like this is your first film or something. You you've made many films. Your film should not look this way. Yeah. So it's it, it's and I always have reasons behind it. And uh, mm-hmm. like I'm I'm one of the few people who did not like Scream Five, and I'm a massive Scream fan. I even like Scream Three, and uh, I will be doing a couple videos with some people on why. And I have very good reasons to not like it. It isn't just, it sucked. So you have to, once you've done all this stuff, you can speak, you know, and, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, like writing a novel. If you haven't written a novel, I mean, what, what are you going off of, you know, off of, you know, from your opinion? Yeah, yeah it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So... I'm but, uh, ashamed to say I've never seen a single screen movie. Okay, Sorry. we're ending this right now. Okay. <laughs> End. Delete. How? What? You got to at least watch the first one. 
I, I've, I've always wanted to. I just never have, I just never got a chance to get them. I mean, I do want to see them. I'm not, it's not that I don't want to see them. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, as bad as this sounds, just this past year was the first time I've actually seen any of the Lethal Weapon movies. Wow. Movies, so I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, man, and I saw those in the theater when they first came out and then watched them again on VHS and watched them again on Laserdisc and watched them again on Blu ray. <laughs> saw all the director's oh, yeah. cut. I mean, I mean, wow. I mean, that's. I mean, I didn't get into film really. I mean, I've always liked movies, but I've never really gotten into a lot of films until, like, oh, I want to say. 2015, 2016. So a lot of them, I just never, um, I just never got the chance to watch. So, and plus, you know, when I, when I was a kid, you know, the only time I could really get anything was Christmas, birthdays. So I had to be very selective with what I could get. And if I did ask my dad for a movie, a $5 movie, he would tell me his sad life story of how <laughs> when he was a kid, they played with rocks and sticks and uh, all that stuff. I'm like, yeah. man, okay, all right, well, all right, well, let's, we're going to talk a little. If we've got time, we're going to talk a little bit about this type of stuff. So, um, I do like the um, in uh, um, all about the blood. I do like the line in it that you say, "It's all about the blood, man." That's what it's all about. Um, I like that. Um, and I like, uh, Dane is in this. So he's in, in another one. Mm -hmm. um, he's the reporter. And um, now this is one of the rare ones that says that you wrote, edited, and directed this. Yeah. So because it's your first film, you wanted to write it out while you feel more comfortable. I, kind of this is the one of the few I did script out. I did uh, write the script for it. Now, the... Um, the scene where it where it cuts from the interview to the actual uh, scene where I where I kill my wife in the movie, my character kills her character. <laughs> um, it's weird saying that saying that out loud. Um, well, that's what I was saying. Is it weird to kill your wife? <laughs> I mean, it's weird when you said out loud. I was like, uh, wait a no, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I think I hear the neighbors calling the police now. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of secrecy here. A lot of secrecy. <laughs> All secrecy. No. Um, yeah. Um, everything, I, like the reporter scenes, I had scripted out. Um, I had, I filmed the, uh, the part, the, the middle scene, like before I even did the, uh, the reporter scene. So that's one of the very few movies I actually did, like the middle and then shot the ending, the beginning and the end. Gotcha. Do you do a lot of uh, <clears throat> like in camera editing or do you just do you film scene one, scene five, that type of thing? Or is it all film, film you, flip it to me, film me, film back to you, film back, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, it depends. I mean, usually what I do is I'll like mostly if, if I'm if I'm filming like my scenes, I'll just do like I'll set the camera up and then I'll film like all my lines. Or or sometimes what I did for that one is I uh is that one or May not be that one. It might be a, might be another one I'm thinking of. But I've had where I where I've, uh, I've recorded the line, hit the uh, stopped it, so I can have a separate video. So I, you know, so I didn't have to split one video up. Sometimes that takes a little more time. So right. I wanted to try to you know cut some of the time down. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So we were we're through. Uh, we're uh, with that one with all about the blood. Now we're on our, our, our technically last one. Um, so that is Blind Idiot God. 
great title. I saw some people on Facebook also commenting that it's a good title. Um, that is 2020. It is its color. Um, 11 minutes, 19 seconds. And um, I put out something on Facebook that says, hey, I want to make an H.P. Lovecraft cosmic horror film. Who would be interested? And you were one of the people who said I would be interested. So you showed me one video and we decided, no, no, it's, not it's good, but it's not exact. And then you came up with this idea for Blind Idiot God. Um, so how did you come up with the title? And how did you come up with creating this, this film? Oh, like I said before, I'm a, I was a big, <laughs> uh, big Lovecraft fan. Um, I just, Lovecraft was just so mysterious. And, you know, just like, um, he might be a terrible person. He may have been racist, but. Yeah. You need to really Unfortunately, we separate the art from the artist. I mean, I can separate the art from the artist. I mean, I don't approve of his ways, but I can say that he made good stories. You know what I mean? Um, so I, uh, I've always been fascinated with uh, Azathoth, which is the supposedly the center uh, of the of the uh, Lovecraftian. Uh, uh, the Cthulhu mythos, basically. And basically, we're all his dream. If he wakes up, we all vanish. Oh, we wow. Know okay. So that's pretty much where I got. And one of his titles is The Blind Idiot God. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's taken right from that, then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so in it, we have, um, at the beginning of it, you are walking in the woods and um, Amy calls and you don't like meatloaf or are you just tired of meatloaf? Is that like an every night thing that she's preparing for you? I like meatloaf myself and I like the singer too. So what, what, like why meatloaf. don't you like meatloaf? I like meatloaf. I just, <laughs> I, I just want it. I just thought it would add a little comedic in there, or maybe <laughs> she, she made it like the, the fifth time that week. I don't know. <laughs> meatloaf again? Oh, uh, meatloaf. I'd do anything for love, but I don't want meatloaf I again. Do that. But I won't do meatloaf again. Um, <laughs> so now you find this little stone that has <laughs> some, some symbols on it. And Oh, there it is. There it is. Right there. Look at that thing. That's, that's the stone. That's, that's what's in the movie. And um, did you make that or did you purchase that? Yes, I made it. And I remember when I showed it to you, you your, your comment was, you made a pair? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, that's not what it's intended to be, but okay. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> you made a pair. <laughs> I don't remember that, but it definitely sounds like something I would say. Um, <laughs> well, I think when you originally showed it to me, it wasn't finished yet. I think like, it wasn't yeah, colored, no. yeah. So to be able to like a fan, didn't have the, uh, it didn't have the, uh, the writing or anything on it. Uh, fun fact, actually, um, there was actually a some writing on the back. Um, I never. I, I, I uh, kind of covered it up in the movie every time I was holding it. I would always hold it like this because I didn't, uh, I didn't know if I did the phrase right. I was trying to write in, a, in Latin, uh, the end is nigh, and I don't know if I used the correct uh, wording. So I said, you know, I'll just scrap that and we'll just stick with the, uh, the, the uh, engraved on the front, which is... Um, if you remember the uh, Lovecraft font that I that I used for the mystery box of horrors, this is yes. the same font. I just scratched it in to the, oh, okay. uh, the same font. All right, okay, that, okay, that's cool. Yeah, that looks good. And uh, what is that made from? Um, it's a uh, like a modeling clay, like you get from the dollar store. I, I, a lot of my stuff is from the dollar store. So. Oh, yeah. I, I understand I, that. <laughs> I'm a cheapskate. What can I say? But yeah, um, I just, uh, it, it was intended to be like Azathoth's uh, um, tentacle, like a piece of his tentacle. Like 
somehow fell off and drifted through space and somehow landed on Earth. And I just so happened to find it. Okay. And um, so when you find the stone, uh, all of a sudden this creepy voice comes up saying, you know, blind idiot God. More creepier than what I'm doing. And I'm doing it like I'm on NPR or something. And, um, uh, but he, he, he wants this, this like, uh, like stone and he takes it with him. And then we get a little bit of, uh, of some freeway driving. And that's where I, I thought, oh, there's some cool locations here. These like kind of old houses and, and, and stores and stuff like that. I thought was pretty cool. Um, you stick the thing in the drawer. Um, and then, uh, next day, um, you're in the kitchen, you're making some, some food and, um, uh, I think that thing cut the man. Okay. Yeah. Did I write down? Um, before you continue going further, uh, remember how you asked me, uh, how do you, um, like, do you, you know, uh, use what you have? The funny thing is, the one scene where it shows me walking up the hill, it, I actually put it on my on the neighbor's uh, bumper. Ah. I use my neighbor's car as a, as a thing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we'll just kind of put it right there. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to put it on the ground. It was just like that's not working. I was trying to put it everywhere else, and it's just and that's not working either. And I was like, you know what? I put it on there. I was like, Matt, you have a park here. I'm using it. Thing you, you weren't up the hill and they had to go to the store. <laughs> well, then I'd be chasing them down to get my phone back. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, actually, you know, you are, there is a shot of you in the kitchen doing something with food, I think. Because then the next shot is you enter your apartment and we just see this massive array of films. And I wrote down lots of movies. And um, then that goes to Amy in the kitchen. And um, you're, yeah, you're kind of like in a daze. Mm -hmm. And she asks you if you want food and you say that you don't want any. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go into the room with the stone. There's the creepy voice again. Um, we get you in the bathroom where you see like a couple visions. And uh, which I think is like the, the Cthulhu pictures again, or like a different pictures. No, that was, uh, that's, that's as a thought you seen. Okay. Okay. So, di okay. Different thing. And then, um, Hey, Amy calls me. I'm in your film. And, and she, she needs to call me, uh, because you're lying to her and saying that, that you were with Steve, who's me. And uh, thank you for using my fake name. And because um, that, that, as many people don't know this, but when I am at work and I piss off a customer, doesn't matter if they're standing in front of me or on the phone, I don't have a name badge on. And they say, what is your name? I go, my name is Steve. So then when they call corporate, they have no idea who Steve is. So thank you for using Steve. <laughs> so Steve is now on camera. Um, I'm reading hey, a- you, you asked me. You asked me to write you as Steve, so I did what you asked. <laughs> I, and I appreciate that. Um, I am reading the Bible, uh, you know, ironically, since I am, I am atheist. So I do like to play the opposite of what I am. I am, am um, I, I've played a conservative and I'm a Democrat and, and I've played a, a pastor and I'm not that. And I like playing the opposite. So um, she calls me to, to say, what, what's, you know, what, what's going on with Dom? And uh, if you remember in, in, in some of the stuff I sent you, I, I'm not, what am I saying? Like Ray? I'm, I'm saying like a completely different, different name. I think you were calling me Rob or something. Rob or something. Yeah, yeah. just for some reason, Dom was I still, have, I still have those. I, <laughs> at some point, I'd like to maybe do like a little blooper. A little blooper thing. Yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> and I tell her, I have not talked to you. I have not seen you. So she hangs up the phone. And then um, that goes to the stone on the table. She's now trying to find you, like what's happening. And um, she comes into the room 
you got the stone in the middle of the table, you got a bunch of candles around it, and um, you're talking about your awakening, that you have awakened, um, you are reborn, um, you're looking all evil and stuff like that, kind of, kind of looking like that again. And um, uh, that is when um, uh, you say blind idiot God has awakened. I, is that, I think that's the end. Did I miss something? No, it's uh, Azathoth, he has awakened. Okay. Azathoth has awakened. And then it ends. He, you, you did get it right. Uh, you, um, the first one, I, I basically said the names of Azathoth. I think I said the Demon Sultan, uh, the Nuclear Chaos, and then I said the Blind Idiot God. And then oh, gotcha. goes, what? Gotcha. She said, what? And I said, Azathoth. He has awakened. And then it fades away. Okay. Once again, leaving it up in the air, leaving for us to, you know, poor, poor Amy. The, the, how many of these films do I have to find out what happens to Amy later on? Well, we just, I mean, <laughs> and actually, the, th that actually does have an ending. Uh, Azathoth is awakened. The Remember how I said, as a thought, we are all his dream. Basically, after he awakens, we cease to exist. Oh, we, we okay. We all faded to nothing. Interesting. So that's that's what the ending means. Got you. Okay, I get it now. I get it. Okay. <laughs> and um, so this one just had, it was you in it, Amy was in it, I'm in it. And I think on this, it's just the directing credit. I don't think that you listed like, writer or editor or anything on it i probably forgot I, I was trying to get it done because i i wanted to get it i think i was um pushing the deadline i think yeah uh, that deadline's been it. pushed many times <laughs> sorry <laughs> I wanted, I, no no you're fine you're fine uh i think uh you originally asked for august i believe I yeah by august. and i was i was like ooh, i was like I, uh, I push. Uh, how do I say it? I was short on time, and I was like, I was just trying to get done. I was just gonna get done. Actually, the day after, we went back to her dad's house because she, uh, we were watching his dog, and uh, we. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna edit all this. I got all the scenes shot. I'm gonna edit it all together and be done with this. In, in, in a way, those deadlines helped people get the stuff done. But I did, and, and of course, like I've said before, everybody owns their own movies. So even with the anthology not coming out yet, people could still put them in the film festivals and create posters and yeah. do screenings and all that type of stuff. So I didn't want, even though the deadline was pushed a few times, I really wanted to get certain people in the film and it just never happened. And so I kept pushing it, saying, Look, man, I'll give you an extra month. Can you finish it? And some people did, and, and some people didn't, which was unfortunate. Um, but they they do have films out, so at least I could say that um, they got you know an, an extra movie out of it. Um, so thank you for for getting it done. I, I appreciate that. So no problem. Thank you um, for allowing me to be a part of it. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. And. Um, the traits that I've noticed in your films, and these may be on purpose or maybe not, um, I've noticed a kind of like junkyard type areas, like with that broken down car with all the metal around it. Um, you'd like to shoot color or black and white or color and black and white. Um, static, you use static a lot from going from shot to shot. Um, uh, cosmic horror seems to be a theme in a lot of your stuff. And I've noticed, and like I said, this may be intentional or maybe not, depends on the film, looking into the camera. So if you're obviously walking around the apartment, you're looking right into the camera. But if it's something that looks like it's not supposed to be, you're looking into the camera. Intentional, not intentional? I never thought of that, to be honest with you. I, I wasn't aware I was, I was looking into the camera. <laughs> yeah, because Amy I looks mean, the camera a lot, too. Yeah, well, a lot of times with um, her, and she's gotten a lot better. When she first started, we had to redo a lot of scenes because she would, I had to really give her like small lines at a time because she would, 
because she couldn't really remember too much at a time. I mean, not not knocking her or anything, but she. Just oh, and, and, and I'm not knocking you guys either. It's just some sometimes yeah, it's intentional, sometimes not. Yeah. No, no, you're fine. I, I was. I. It uh, works for your stuff. Maybe, 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 maybe I just looked in. And I didn't realize I was looking, or a lot of times is I'm making sure that I'm still filming because a lot of times I have done this in the past where I thought I filmed something and I didn't hit the record button and I acted out an entire scene and <laughs> I never filmed. I was doing charades at that point. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and that stops. That that really does. You got to make sure that that red dot is there when you've when you mm -hmm. gone through the whole scene and it's not there. You're like, oh, fuck. Seriously? That was a good one, too. <laughs> And um, so now there is a ninth film that I didn't get to see. And um, what, it, what is that ninth film? Um, there's actually two different ones. Um, there's okay. a, um, I did a second um, short for Tony Newton. Um, he, uh, I'm not sure if this got put in to the 60 Seconds to Live uh, anthology or not. I'm not 100% sure. I know the uh, it, uh, All About the Blood did, but I'm not sure. This one's called Snuffed Out. It's basically just me doing like a fake snuff film. Okay. And I have a clown mask on, which I don't know if you can see it. Maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. I got that from David Sterling, believe it or not. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I uh when I ordered his uh Camp Blood box set, um I I think he uh he couldn't get the box out in time or something. And I guess he felt bad about it. He said, Hey, I'll hook you up with something cool. And that's when he sent that. Nice. Uh, David, David's good with that type of stuff. So he's Yeah, he um, plus, I have like three copies of Iron, what is it, Iron Thunder or something like that. What, what that movie he sends out yeah. a lot of. Yeah, Iron Thunder, um, the planet movie that he has. Um, something the one I, get, I got is like Iron Thunder or something like that. Um, yeah, that, yeah that's, like, he's a big fan of that one. Yeah, yeah. David's a good guy. I, so, yeah. Oh, he's a good guy. I have three copies of that movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have multiple ones of his, too. So that it's just what he does. I don't think he remembers what he sends out. So he's got so, so many orders to fill that he just forgets. I just keep them. I figure one day maybe there'll be a collector's item. Yeah. yeah. Or, I, or, or I if he know. runs out of copies, I can just mail them. There you go. Yeah, there you go. So, And um, so there was the... The snuff one, and then you said there was two. What was the other one? I did one for uh, Dustin Ferguson. Uh -huh. uh, I did, um, I have the DVD here. I did a, uh, I think it was a like six minute uh, found footage style for uh, Faces of Dying 3, which is. Oh, okay. All right. Now I have. Uh, um, on the back, it says a supernatural hanging. Um, it was a, basically like a ghost story style. Um, I, I unfortunately, I, I must not have. Usually, what I do with a lot of my movies is I save them to my computer before I delete them off my phone. Well, I must have accidentally uh, deleted it before I got it to my computer. So. Unfortunately, the only way I can watch it is on the face of the dying tree. But oh, this wow. was pretty good. Um, I think you can one, get them back if you just ask them to send you copies. They, you know, I could probably. Well, I did uh, make a DVD copy from through Kanaki. I, I I I use every excuse to use Kanaki. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I was doing uh, movies that. You know, never got a DVD release or like out of print or something. I found it on YouTube, and I was like, you know what? Put it on Kanaki, make a copy, and delete it later. So I can at least yeah. have a copy of them. 
I think, yeah, it, it's a good use of that. I mean, I used to, yeah, I would track down films that aren't available or TV shows and then download them and then burn them onto just like a DVD-R. So, but mm-hmm. Kanaki is a better way to go because you can make that cover, that insert, you can, you know, put a picture mm-hmm. on the disc. It's, it's a much better way to go than just a, a disc. Exactly. So. Exactly. So, I mean, I, it, I, uh, I, I think I did make one. Um, I wasn't too happy with how the artwork turned, turned out, but it, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, At least I have it. That's true. There you go. All yeah. right. So that's, wow, we, we have hit a little over the two hour mark. There you go. Yeah, um, yeah on, on, on some you films that are only one minute. Hour. Yeah, yeah, two hours is normally the, between 90 and, and uh, minutes and two hours. So that's, we, we hit two hours with uh, eight films that are only an hour to watch. We, we got two hours out of that. So that's not too bad. Yeah. Lots, lots to talk about. So, um, all right, so let's wrap this up. And um, uh, is there anything that you would like to promote? Any like past, present, future? Anything you would like to let people know about? Um, I you can check out my YouTube channel. I mean, you're going to leave a link in the description. Um, check it out if you want. If not, I'm, I don't blame you. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> um, uh, I do plan on making future films. I do have a feature that I'm work I'm gonna be working on. I'm not gonna to say too much. I talked to you about it, the creature feature. Um that's one I have planned coming. And then uh yeah um I, other than that uh support John. I mean that's the only thing I can say. Okay. Subscribe to his channel. Yeah well thank you. <laughs> yeah this this will be up in the uh, next week. So people can can check it out. And uh, now, what about those um, like the the films that technically you don't have copies of, like that that the Dust of Ferguson one or Tony Newton? Can people purchase those too? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you uh, the DVD of Faces of Dying Three is is out of print, but he did re-release all four of them on a on a Blu-ray. So you can. Uh, go to Dustin Ferguson's Kanaki site and order the Blu-rays. Okay. Um, I, I just said I'm in part three. And uh, 60 Seconds to Live is, um, I forget what the website is, but it is, uh, it's coming out in, uh, in uh, April uh, 5th, I believe. April 5th, yeah. Okay. Um, that, that is, um, I think it's going to be out through Amazon and uh, MVD or something like that. Okay. Okay, good. So people, people can go check out Dessa Ferguson's Kanaki if they want to get the get that one DVD, but as four volumes, I guess. And then we have to yeah. look forward to the the Tony Newton one coming out. And then uh, a lot of the other stuff, uh, we could they could go check out your YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below. And um, and then uh, Rain of Vibrant Screams should be coming out shortly. So uh, people can look forward to that. Yeah, so a lot of stuff. So there's at least three or four things with you that people can look forward to. Yeah. Yeah, so there we go. All right, everybody. So let's, uh, we're going to call this a, call this a day and uh, because it's nice, but we're still going to call it a day. And um, I guess that's it. So thank you very much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And um, I really want people to go check out your, your YouTube channel. So uh, definitely do that. And um, I guess I, I will be saying goodbyes unless there's anything else you would like to say. No, uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day to interview a small person like you. Uh, <laughs> maybe not small, but you know. What I mean. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm 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 a big small person myself. So yes, I understand. <laughs> All right, everybody. I will. Uh, we're gonna sign off. I will catch you on the next one filmmaker one film, and I will see you later. Bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for hanging out after the video. And uh, thank you for watching the very first Dark Park Films sponsored video. And who is that sponsor? Well, I've now learned if I do this...
with my hands, they go to the right area. There we go. That would be Wildlife Command Center Coffee, and you can purchase it right there. You can go to their website, which is uh, buywcc.com, and pick up their coffee. Uh, they have uh, two blends, which I'm going to show you now. Um, the first coffee is this one right here. Uh, this is a breakfast blend. It's 10 ounces, and it is a medium ground. Um, and it does say, and it's breakfast, like I said, and this is what it says right here. It says... Uh, Early bird can catch the worm. So there you go, a breakfast blend coffee that helps you catch the worm in the morning. And um, I really like this one. I'm more of a, a, a breakfast kind of blend coffee guy in the morning. Um, so this one I, I really like. Um, it has that little bit of oomph to it to kind of get you moving, uh, you know, get you up and out. And uh, so I really enjoy this one. But that doesn't mean that I don't like the other one, which is this one right here. Uh, this is a dark roast. It is also 10 ounces. And both of these are $7.99 at their website. Pretty good price for 10 ounces worth of ground coffee. Um, this one is, um, it's a little darker. So it's, you know, I think it's better for drinking at night. Maybe if you're you know, writing a screenplay, or if you're filming, uh, this has got that oomph oomph, that double punch to, to get you going. So um, this is one that I also recommend. I like both of these quite a bit, uh, but I'm, I kind of do, you know, the breakfast in the morning and then the dark more at night. Um, so I recommend both of these quite a bit. And um, how did I find out about these two, you know, uh, these two coffees here? And how did I find out about uh, Wildlife uh, Command Center? Well, when I was working um, on uh, Night of the Zom Ghouls, there was a box of coffee that was just sitting there, filled with coffee. And we didn't know what to do with it. Like, whose is this? Who brought it? Why, why is it here? And so we just kept going to the store and buying coffee. And then one day I said, why don't we just get the coffee out of the box and use that instead of you know wasting money on going to Smith's or whatever and, and picking up coffee. So we did. Uh, we did not realize that it was um, the Wildlife Command Center coffee and uh, that it you know, was sponsoring the movie. And it was great coffee. Everybody loved it. And we just went right through it. By the last day of filming, this coffee was gone. And uh, I went and found out you know, about Wildlife Command Center asked if they would like to be a sponsor for Dark Park Films, you know, for their coffee. Um, as many of you know, I love coffee. I love coffee mugs. And so this was a perfect match. And Wildlife Command Center is great with animals. So they provide a great service for rescuing animals. So it's kind of that double whammy for me where coffee, helping animals, you can't go wrong. And they were even cool enough to send me get in there, a coffee mug, because they knew that I liked coffee mugs. And right now, I don't get that. Oh, 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 oh. A little bit. I'm going to go on the keyboard. But there's their, that's their uh, dark blend, because I'm recording this at night. So I am, I am actually drinking that while recording. Um, also, one thing that you can get at their website, which is cool, is you can get this. There you go. This pocket knife. Uh, which is $9.49. And um, this is pretty cool because it has their name on it. Uh, you know, Wildlife Command Center. We can catch it. And this is what it looks like. Put that down there. There we go. Fully, fully out. So you're getting like the bottle opener. You got the corkscrew. You got a screwdriver. You got a blade. And then you got this little hook thing that you can pop it into something that doesn't have a tab, and then um, you know the liquid or whatever in there will come out. So this is pretty cool. And um, I'm just gonna keep mine in my car because you never know, you might need a pocket knife. So um, please support them. I'm gonna have links down below, uh, you know, where you can you know, check out just the uh, Wildlife Command Center. Um, I'll also have a link for Wildlife Command Center Coffee and uh, it will basically be for uh, 
both these guys right here. And uh, please support them. Um, I support them. I think what they do is pretty awesome. And, um, you know, maybe this coffee will, will be on your set or in your kitchen. It will definitely be, you know, on my set in my kitchen. I know that. So uh, please, once again, I'm going to show you these. Please go to their, their website and uh, pick up their coffee and make it, uh, make it part of your day or night, depending on which one you, which one you like. So uh, that'll be about it. I really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, yeah, so thank you. And uh, once again, please, uh, please support uh, my channel. Please support uh, the Wildlife Command Center. And I will catch you later. Bye.